Hey y'all, Justin with Kayak Catfish. Well, it is dawn out here on the Tennessee River. I think it's daylight enough for you to see me and for me to knock out this intro, but what I'm doing is I'm getting set up in a backwater creek system. My last couple videos here for my regular viewers, I've been fishing under balloons, just trolling pieces of cut bait, super shallow for some catfish. Now, the first video I did this on here, I had a really good day, got on size and numbers. My last video, which was filmed yesterday, I hit a different creek, got good numbers of fish, but the quality really wasn't there. So this morning I'm out in another creek that's kind of similar to the same uh, creeks that I have fished on the previous two trips where it's a long section of a creek that has really shallow water. Like right now, 2.9 feet, and I'm kind of toward the back of this creek. You can see it's, hopefully you can see anyway, hopefully it's light enough, but it's a, a wide area. There's a lot of brush and debris back in here, and then it's got a really long section. It kind of bottles down, opens back up again, and so what I'm going to do is put my baits you know, two to three feet under these balloons as I make my way out of here and try to just come across catfish that are working their way back in the shallows here to feed or maybe they're on some nesting sites or, or, or around nesting sites back in here. Because places like this, when you got these backwaters that have a lot of debris, calm water, you're not getting flow through here. These are good. At, these are good nesting areas, and we're here in June here in, in East Tennessee. It's it's spawning month for our big catfish. So I'm gonna just get these baits on here. I've got some skipjack. I'm gonna cut that up. I'm gonna use two rods here, a head and a midsection. Put those about 30 to 50 yards behind my kayak and troll my way out of this creek at about 0.3 to 0.5 miles an hour, and just hopefully come across some fish. Let's get baited up and do it. All right, let's get the first bait on there. It's a head. And midsection, and that's a smaller skipjack, so I'm gonna go ahead and toss that tail overboard. That's my that's my sacrifice to the turtles. Hopefully they'll leave my other baits alone if I feed them my scraps. That's my deal I'm trying to make with them. I have agreed to that deal. The turtles have not formally agreed to it. I'm just hoping they say yes. But regardless, I'm gonna pull some baits through here. Water temp, surface temp's 80 degrees. So this is a pretty warm area here. Don't have the fog out here this morning that I have had on the last couple trips. And in the last couple trips, the later the morning has went on after the fog has burned off, the worse the action has gotten. So I've got my balloon set on this rod here, about two and a half feet-ish, which is gonna put me just a few inches off bottom here to start with. But as I make my way out of this creek, it's gonna get deeper. And so my bait, as we move along, is just gonna basically get further and further off the bottom, but I'll give it a toss back there. And uh, I mentioned before in the other videos, but I'll say it again now for people that are new. When a fish are back here in these shallow backwater areas, they're actively feeding. So they're gonna be inclined to come up higher up in the water column to snatch your baits. So even if I get out there, you know, seven, 10 feet deep and my baits are down three foot under the surface, they are still likely to come get it if they're in here actively feeding. And this one here, I'm gonna lower my balloon down. These balloons are just overhand knot tied around my line. And so they can, with a little bit of effort here, you can slide them down to whatever position you want on your line. And I'll be adjusting them as I get up in deeper water Boy, Lord Almighty, I done backlashed here first thing. I'm in a rush, y'all, trying to get everything done and get going here before that sun gets high in the sky. I want to catch some fish before it gets hot today because I'm planning on being off the water 11 o'clock-ish. It's supposed to be high 80s today, and our humidity right now is just sweltering. It's comfortable out here right now, but it is humid. It's, listen at me. I'm going crazy here. Hang on, bear with me. I've hit the wrong button on my remote. Lower to mighty. There we go. I was trying to lower my speed down and talk, and it's the old can't chew gum and walk and talk deal. But all right, so I've got my baits out. 
I'm gonna get myself turned here and going. I'm gonna let out some more lines so that they're 30 to 50 yards behind me, just a little bit of distance. And I'm going to follow the old original creek channel out of here because it's all, you know, over here on the sides, I'm, you know, being, I'm 2.9 feet right here where I'm at. But when you get over here on the sides, you're looking, it's wide, but it's just a few inches deep on each side. So what I'm doing here, and you might can see it on my graph, that old creek bed that was here before they flooded all this to make the reservoir. I'm following that all the way out here. And so my baits, I'm gonna try to keep them kind of in that, in that old channel there too. And so hopefully fish that are working back in here, hopefully some of them gonna be following that path. But uh, anyway, like I was saying while I was fumbling my words and messing with my trolling motor remote, I'm gonna be off the water fairly early today, definitely by 11 before it turns into a sweat box. It's out here right now, it's comfortable. Look right here. I'm already hooked up, buddy. I'm already hooked up. We hooked up just like that. Nice, man. I hadn't even let that bait I didn't even let that bait out hardly. Boy, he's coming right at me too. Look at this, buddy. He's making a run. Nice. Y'all two feet deep right there. Let's see if I can get him back around here on the other side, away from my motor. Get over here away from that motor, boy. Well, that's a, that's a good start, ain't it? Didn't even make it through the dang intro. Fumbling my words, stuttering my way through it, and we got us a fish right here. First thing. That is what I want to see. I'm telling you folks, this shallow water bite has done me well the last couple trips out. Now, I am inclined to ride that shallow water bite until it dies. Well, yep. Let me get you unhooked. Let me get you unhooked, old buddy. Y'all, I'm just... Here's this fish right here, old blue cat. Uh, he's a larger dink. That's a, that's a nice way to start the morning. But, uh, yeah, y'all, I'm about to get turned around here and we'll get trolling out of this creek, but that's a good start, ain't it? I'm happy with that. But this backwater bite, you know, I'm gonna ride it out until it until it dies. I'm just hitting different creeks that all, we got a lot of creeks out here on the Tennessee River. I mean, they're just flowing in every which way. But what I have, what I've been looking for are places like this where you've got long stretches of really shallow water. And I'm, I'm looking for areas where I expect fish to maybe have set up shop maybe set up shop to nest and so places like this are areas that i would suspect there's probably some in here on the nest and so anyway i'm gonna get spun back around give me another bait on that rod and we're gonna let i'm gonna shut up and i'm gonna get to fishing that's what i'm gonna do y'all i just got turned around look at my balloon over there can you see it i know it's dark out here it's under oh i pulled it out of his mouth he was running with it. I don't know what it was. It may not have been a, may not even been a cat. It could have been a turtle or something, but boy, that's encouraging. That is really encouraging. Let's get this thing tossed back out. Yeah, you know, I'm not even gonna, I had planned on having these things about 30 to 50 yards behind me but heck if i'm hitting it this close i ain't even gonna fool with it i'm just gonna make a short cast and it'll make the fights that much more intense when they do hook up let's get us another midsection on this one well i love it when i get bit right away y'all that's exciting man it's taking advantage of the morning bite. It's the you know, last last few trips out. It seems like I'm getting bit first thing, and then the bite just dies. And so I'm trying to catch them while I can, you know. All right, there's our next bait going out. All right, 
man. All right, less talking, more fishing. Let's do it. Look at my balloon back there. It's under, sunrise coming up, rods going down. Let's reel it in. Look at it just shooting across the water over there. <laughs> That's fun. Oh, I love that. That's fun, y'all. It's like being a kid and watching the bobbers. This fish bit at the right time to see the sun coming up over the tree line over there too. It's a beautiful sunrise. Not quite as beautiful a fish, but it doesn't take away from the from the sun. <laughs> Come here, fishy. You interrupting the sunrise. Come on. Let's get you unhooked and find big brother. It's another dink right here. That's two on the midsection though. That's been the, seems like the preference so far. Even the fish that ain't hooked up, most of them have hit this midsection. I had one, had one hit on the, on the head so far. You know, it's a dink, but it's a larger size dink. If I'm gonna catch small fish, I'd rather them be that size right there, by gosh, than the, them little one pounders. I'll reel that balloon down there. There we go, get it repositioned. Now let's put us another bait on. I've left this skipjack. I didn't even bother putting it out or putting it back in the cooler here because I said, well, if I'm getting bit right away, I'm probably gonna go through some bait today. At least I'm hoping I am anyway. that on. Get this thing cast back out. That sunrise is beautiful, but with not being any fog out here today, when that sun gets up, it is going to be miserably hot very quickly. I know some of you out there in the desert are thinking, man, high 80s, that's nothing. We in 100 degrees out here in the desert, but I've been to the desert. It's a different kind of heat. There ain't no humidity out there in the desert. But anyway, I'm set up again, y'all. I'm gonna keep trolling my way along. You can see here, I ain't made much progress, but that's two fish. And uh, I got a long ways to go in this creek and I'm probably gonna troll till either out here, or if I'm getting bit, I'm just going to keep going in it, but definitely want to hit from the very back of it here up to about eight, nine, ten foot or so of depth. So, anyway, one last look there at that sunrise in case I don't get bit again before the. Well, I'm already getting bit again. Look at that. He's a pulling. That's really me in. This is on the head. <laughs> And they're back here. You, you, I don't know if you can see or not with the lighting. They're shad all back up in here. They're, I mean, they're splashing around everywhere. So these fish, they're working back in here to eat these shad and other bait fish that are back here. And I got an easy meal just dangling around here under this float for them. There's another one about the, about the same size. Larger dinks. We'll see if we can get the bait back on this one at least. We're pulling that bait right back out. That's in good shape too. He's crushed it, but all the meat's still intact. So, yeah, out here, buddy. All right. Let's send us another one out here. We're hooking up again. I like to see him splashing back there already. <laughs> That's one thing that's pretty awesome about this shallow water fishing is they instantly start coming up and and thrashing around on the surface. Normally when I'm fishing deep, you know, it's a straight up and down fight and then by the time I get them up, the fight's pretty much over. But here in shallow water, they ain't got nowhere to go. Left and right, forward and back, and then to the surface. This one here, it's the smallest one in the morning right here. This is one of them small dinks. It's another bite though. 
Get in action back up in here. Quit. Quit. Well, you talk about a bad day. Look where this fish got hooked. He's hooked in the mouth. That hook come out dang near in his brain. You're lucky, fish. You're a survivor. Get out of here. Boy, he's ready to go, too, wasn't he? I think I might be getting bit. This rod here is wiggling around. I don't see my balloon back there. He must have it. I'm just going to reel down. Yep, yeah, he's on there. I saw my line just wiggling. And I looked back and couldn't find my balloon. I was like, I thought something's got it. I'm staring into the sun now. I can't see the fish. There we go. That's another, that's another larger dink. You know, we all part of me wants to keep going out this creek, but part of me wants to run back there right where I started and throw out some more baits and hit this area again. I mean, if there's this many fish back here, you have to think that some bigger fish could possibly be back here too. There he is. Oh, small, small dinkity doodah here. Let me get my bait back. I'm gonna take a look at this head here. It's probably, I'm gonna go ahead and switch it out. The mouth of it's tore up there. Uh, with our water temps being 80 degrees, I mean, it's gonna, these baits bleed out pretty quick at those temperatures, so. I'm gonna toss it out. We'll feed another one to the turtles there. Yeah, you know, I'm torn, but I think I'm gonna keep going out this creek. I just wanna see what's out here once we get out to a little bit deeper depths. Right here again, right here again. Oh, that was a digging back there, man. I was just about to film a little talking segment and give you some fishing pro tip here, but that'll have to wait because I gotta reel in another fish. I took the camera off my chest. I was gonna do a do a segment. And this fish said, heck with your segment. I'm eating your bait. I'm all right with that. Interrupt me anytime, fish. That's another one that's small, though. This is another one of them. Probably tied for the smallest one of the morning so far. Let's get him undone and get that bait back. It's still in his mouth there. I see it. That one ate the head. There we go. I'm pulling that, pulling that bait back out if I can get it. Look at that. <laughs> Look at the size of that fish's mouth to the width of that bait. I'm telling you folks, if they can get it in their mouth, they're gonna eat it. it. Makes you wonder, you know, them 80, 100 pounders, how big a bait can they eat? Probably a lot bigger than what we normally throw on, that's for sure. I don't know that you could throw a bait that's too big for a hungry catfish, but that thing's in good shape. I'm throwing it back out. Right, got that bait back out. Let out just a smidge more line. Now I'm gonna get spun around here. Now what I was gonna do, y'all, is I was gonna give a little fishing pro tip here for you. Is when you're coming under a bridge like I'm about to do and you got rods standing up behind you, put them things down. I can tell you from personal experience that can be a very expensive mistake when you clip your rod tips on a low hanging bridge. I have done it. It has been expensive for me. Be mindful of your surroundings, people. It can be, it can be some, cause some damage. <laughs> you see my balloon out there? It's just kind of slowly swimming along. Something's got it. I'm about to crank down on him here and just see, see what we can do. Yeah, he's on. I got him. That's the first one in a while, y'all covered a pretty good distance. Nothing happened. I mean, no dink taps or nothing. I reeled my baits in a little while ago, checked them. That's still good. I put a little distance, put a little bit more distance under the 
balloon there for my baits. This is going to be another small, because I'm out here now. I'm seven feet deep out here where I'm at now. And my plan is to continue to lower my baits a little bit as I make my way out deeper in this creek so that they're, you know, closer to bottom. I'm not too concerned about them being, you know, a foot or two off bottom. This one here is barely skin hooked. He's liable to pop free before I get hold of him. That'd be okay with me. Because, you know, fish in this creek, they're going to they gonna find him baits. There he is. Tiny, skinny thing. Yeah, here. Left us the bait on, though. Still in good shape. But I do want my baits just a smidge deeper as I make my way out in this creek, so... Yeah, that right there, that's, I don't know, four, four and a half foot under my balloon. We'll cast back out there. All right, we fishing again. I'm gonna let out just a little bit more line. I'm gonna get spun back around. I'm just, again, gonna work my way out this creek. I think what I'm gonna do Let's make my way over here to this side by these docks and bring my baits up right along the edge of them docks, see what's hanging out over there. I'm hooked up again here, I think. Oh, that's a pulling. Again, y'all, I have covered some more water, but I've got over here now by these docks. And I'm gonna just go up here beside them, run my baits along the edges and see what's going on. My better action was there at the back of this creek. I, mean, I was getting bit left and right back there. Small fish. But uh, bigger than what I'm getting out here, that's for dang sure. But I have committed in my mind to going on out here all the way to the end of this creek. And so, maybe a mistake, but we're going to find out. All it takes is one good fish to make the day legendary. All right, another small. Threw the bait off. That's all right. We'll cut another sliver here. And let's get this. We can get a bigger chunk out of this one, I think. Feed the turtles again. I had a turtle come up a little while ago up in the surface here. He was looking at me, giving me the stink eye, you know, and I thought, man, I'm throwing a bunch of my scraps out. Now, he wasn't happy with me. He was wanting more. These turtles, they ain't grateful. No matter how much you give them, they just want more. It's like kids these days. I guess the turtles are learning from the kids or vice versa. Maybe the kids are learning from them ninja turtles. I don't know. I had some of them when I was a kid. All right, here we go again. Cast that over there, but as I make my way along, it'll pull in behind me here. Come up along these docks. Oh, oh, right here. Let me get that and sit. This is taking off now. Oh, I think that one come free. Yeah, that one popped free. We don't want to catch that in no way. That probably wasn't worth catching. At least he left the bait on there. It still looks pretty good too. Yeah, it's still good shape. Raise my balloon up. Go a little higher than that. All right, let me get this and cast back out now. A little false alarm there. Myself spun around and we're gonna be fishing again. Hello, doggies. They just realized I was out here. They've been playing, chasing each other all over their yard. I remember back when my dog Roscoe had that kind of energy. Now he sleeps about 20 hours a day. I miss him being a puppy, but I sure don't miss him getting in everything. <laughs> All right, guys, so I got my baits back out here. I'm gonna slow my speed back down, but uh, you can see these docks here. They all up and down this creek, really both sides, but this is the deeper side of the creek over here, so I'm just gonna work the edges and see. You never know. 
with brush piles and crappie and bass over there so there could be some cats up there feeding on them and i'm gonna have a bait right in their face if they are so i'm gonna keep making my way out here i got i'm bad at distances maybe a tenth of a mile or so here before i reach the mouth of this thing and then i'll make a decision from there do i want to make another pass down this creek do i want to get out in the channel maybe work a there's a flat out here just a few feet deep uh, just past this creek channel and going down river so that's a possibility too but uh, kind of just want to see how i do in this creek overall see if i get any better quality fish at all and then make a decision once i get out here what's going on right here that bait's under man oh man that's a point Oh, he's gonna get my lines tangled up right here he's going yeah he is he's went under that other line over there that's all right i was due for a tangle this one here i believe is going to be the a little better quality than the ones i've been getting up this creek well he's got me completely spun around here just turn the motor off let him take me on a sleigh ride hopefully he's gonna stay under this line and not get all wrapped up in it I may can keep him out of it I may get lucky right here I did he went under that line but he did not get all wrapped up in it let's see what we got here I'm on 11 feet I believe this is probably the biggest one of the morning right here he's got another fish now look at this there's another fish right there beside him trying to snatch that bait look at him i'm gonna get to, let's see if i can get him back over here and see if that other fish is right there beside him look he's trying to eat it out of his mouth this happened a couple weeks ago too is he still there he is still there he's still right here with him I can get control of it. If he'd calm down, that other one would come up and snatch that bait. I'd love to get that on camera. It's still right there beside him. Come on, fish. Quit that. Let that other fish. I want to get two fish on the same hook. That'd be the title of the video right there. Y'all remember that? Two girls, one cup. Two fish, one hook. This thing just splashed me in the face. <laughs> Uh, I think it's gone. Crap, I think that other one's gone. Let's land it. Well, that thing splashed me right in the face, man. I mean, dead on, right in the eyeballs. There we go. Hey, y'all, not front camera worthy, but probably the biggest of the morning. I'll take it. You can tell that thing's been up in shallows. He's dark. Let's let him go. Man, he splashed me good. That one right there, buddy, he is ornery. Well, how awesome would that have been, though, if that other fish had snatched that bait out of his mouth and got itself hooked and had two of them on one hook? That would have been a dang good video. But I'm gonna get myself spun back around here. I'd cut my motor off while that fish was fighting. Now, he's got me all cattywampus here. There's my other balloon, but I'm gonna I think what I'm going to do is make my way up here to the end of this creek, turn, and go back down it along the other side over there. I think I'm just going to stay in this creek here this morning. Oh, boy, that's a digging buddy, and I'm under a dang bridge, too. I wanted to pull my baits under the bridge. I didn't necessarily want to catch a fish while I was under here, though. I can't lift my rod up very high. <laughs> This fish, so he's gonna cause me problems, but I'm happy to get him. I have covered the length of this creek coming back down and got nothing, man. This is the first fish in a while. It's just been dead on this pass back down it. Get myself out from under this bridge, y'all. I can't talk to the camera and deal with the kayak and the bridge and everything. Okay, now I think I can focus again. We'll get this fish up here. 
He hit it hard, but he ain't very big. It's been the theme of the morning out here is it's been small fish all morning long, but my better quality fish came back here from the bridge back in this creek where it's really shallow. So I'm making my way to the back of it here and see if I can get back on them. This is encouraging here, you know, get out here right in front of this bridge and and get another one. So hopefully I get on back in here, but it's getting late in the morning now. The sun's up and I don't know, I don't know if this fish are still gonna be back here or if they're still gonna be active back here. We're gonna find out though. We'll do it a little quicker if it's in here, it'd calm it down. There it is y'all, another larger size dink. We'll get rid of him. And yeah, I, uh, you know, this is a fairly long creek. And I went all the way from the back here, you know, a couple feet deep out to the mouth of it and um, the better action of course is back here first thing at first light and then as i made my way on out the bites got fewer and fewer and fewer and as i turned and come back i mean the pass down through here i mean nothing nothing was going on so uh i just i just i committed at this point to fishing this creek this morning so, so i'm gonna finish up with it so i made my pass uh, working back down through here and I'm gonna just keep going back here as far as I can get that's you know reasonably uh, you know reasonable depth not to mess with my motor or anything but I'm using the thank goodness I got the motor today because back here on my rudder you might can see I've popped the cord off uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna need some tools to fix that which I don't have with me out here on the water so that's gonna be something I I fix when I get home, but this electric motor here, I can use it to steer myself and be able to get on back up in here. It's just that fish hit at the worst possible time right there while I was directly under the bridge. <laughs> but uh, anyway, enough of me talking. I'm going to get another bait on here and finish working our way back. Y'all, look at this. I wasn't paying attention. Uh, I guess I had a fish eat that one on the green balloon and he swam from over here around and come up hell i never even knew i had one on till i just looked back to glance at my baits oh goni let's see if we can get him finagled out of that other line over there there he is now i've caught up with him oh yeah he's in that other line too man i was having such a a great morning out here now everything's going to crap I pop the oh man that's a big gar that's a big gar right there that ain't even a cat well i take back what oh, he just come out of my line too i take no he didn't i was gonna say i take back what i just said i pop my rudder cable couldn't catch any cats got a tangled mess here well this is a nice fish that's a big old gar that's a, that's a long nose gar, I believe. We got spotted and we got long nose. That's got some spots on him, but I think it's a, I think it's a long nose. I don't know the difference between them. I never catch them. They attack my baits all the time, but I don't ever get hold of that one. Ain't even got the hook. He's just got my line. Look at it, my bait sitting down there. Maybe he got the other bait. I don't know. He's got me of the line here. I got a daggone mess. That's awesome though, man. That's a big old gar. That's a welcome surprise, man. I was not expecting to catch one of them. Normally they just, they get you baits and tear them up, but I don't ever hook into them. That's awesome, man. He's popped my balloon. I guess uh, gar teeth and balloons don't mix. Look at that. That's awesome. Hey, what I'm gonna do y'all I'm gonna take this leader right here I cut my leader off so at least I don't have to worry about that hook getting in me I ain't never caught one this big this is a this is a PB gar for me y'all PB right here I'm gonna take a look at this other I'm gonna pull this I got another fish on this right here y'all look at this I've got a fish on, look right here. There's where my other hook is, it's in a fish. 
Oh my gosh. <laughs> what a dang mess. I don't even know what's happened here. I know I'm getting this one unhooked out of the way. Get out of here, blue cat. <laughs> you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to cut this leader too. That way I don't have to worry about where it's at. What a crazy situation's going on. Now, I don't know how smart this is, bringing something with that many teeth right in the kayak, but by gosh, I've just done it because I want to land this thing. This is, again, the biggest gar that I've ever got my hands on. <laughs> I don't know. That's probably stupid to bring this thing in like this. Look at the teeth on that thing, man. Okay, I got my line undone from him. Look at the teeth on that thing, man. Look at the chompers on him. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, look at that. <laughs> look at that, buddy. This thing, what a mess he made, but it was totally worth it. Look at the chompers on that, man. Awesome. <laughs> All right, I don't know if you got to revive these things or what. I'm not going to put my hand down there and it's near its mouth to find out. I'm just going to lean over here and let him go. All right, buddy. Well, he took right off, I guess. <laughs> oh, man. Now I'm making my way along here. What if that was him that popped up behind me? But, uh, yeah, I'm making my way down through here. And I was a little bit upset because, you know, I hadn't, I made the decision to fish this creek, to finish it out, come back down through here. Wasn't doing worth a crap. Messed up my rudder cable, so I lost use of it. And then I glance back and I see my balloon from this side has swam toward me and over and got all up in that line. I'm like, daggone, man. And it's just, uh, then I get a hold of him. I mean, I, I look and I see him and everything changes. It's like a, the mood just flips like that. Oh, that was awesome. I don't know the first thing about targeting gar. I, I watched some of uh, uh, Catching Dinosaurs. Henry there, he's got a uh, alligator gar guide service down there in Texas. And I've watched a lot of his videos. Uh, he fishes for them. Um, just like I would fish for catfish with pieces of cut bait and small hooks. The biggest difference I see in his techniques than mine is that um, he lets them run with this bait a while, lets them eat it so it gets in their mouth, you know, and I guess there's probably been a lot of times where, you know, I'm out here fishing, I get a bite from a gar and probably just pull the hook right out of their mouth, you know, because I'm not letting them eat that bait. But that one there, he never had the hook, never had either one of them, just was wrapped up in my line and got it caught in his teeth and boy i'm glad he did because that was awesome oh, i don't know if you can see it there's another big gar right there on top of the water he just sitting there they all back in these backwaters back here man i was just up looking around so i seen some shadows there's something else over there but you all won't be able to see probably too far away but uh yeah i'm liable to hook something else here in just a minute Get my baits up here to them. Well, guys, I'm almost back up here to the bridge. I think I'm going to call it quits. The bite really kind of slacked off here the last two, two and a half hours. It's like the higher the sun gets up in the sky, the, the less frequently the bites are coming. But out here this morning, first thing, I was getting bit very quickly and very frequently. And, you know, the fish I got, them cats, they weren't very big. But when you're in the shallows and you're fishing under balloons, it's a dang good time. It's a lot of fun. And then lucking into that big gar, man, that's the biggest gar I've ever landed. And it was an absolute blast to catch that thing. So I'm going home happy today, even though I messed up my dang rudder cable. But uh, anyway, y'all, it's been an awesome trip out here. Probably a long video. But I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching.